Hey up everyone, Rich here at OnlyVans. In this video, we're going to answer the question of is it worth joining the Caravan and Motorhome Club? If you look back over the centuries, there have been many, many great rivalries. Rangers, Celtic, Liverpool, Man United, North Korea, South Korea. But none are much bigger than the Caravan and Motorhome Club and the Camping and Caravan Club. For those of you that are active on social media, it's something which gets quite commonly debated as whether it's worth it, does it represent value for money, what are the benefits of it, should I, shouldn't I? So what we're going to do is we're going to take you through, now that we've had a little bit of experience of using the Caravan and Motor Home Club, what we think and answer the elusive question of does it represent good value for money and is it worth it? So a little bit about our history. So we originally started with a small tent and then a big tent and then we've got a trailer tent and we've now got our caravan on a seasonal pitch. So when we got our caravan in January, we opted to join the Caravan and Motorhome Club. And obviously with us being on a seasonal pitch, it didn't really make much sense for us to do that. But I just assumed naively that it was just one of those things that sort of you had to do and that you were expected to do. So being, being an absolute human and being a creature of habit, I tend to visit the sort of same five, six, seven sites religiously over my, my whole camping history. So I'm probably one of those people that historically wouldn't have joined the Caravan and Motorhome Club. But recently, as you know, we got a camper van. Um, so we thought it would be a great opportunity, especially being where we are and having loads and loads of sites nearby. We thought it'd be a great opportunity just to see what people kept talking about when they started talking about certified locations and certified sites and trying to see and trying to establish what and whether there was any value in the membership. So since we've got our camper van on the 29th of July um, and with me working the job that I do a lot of the time I have to work Saturdays so it's not been possible a lot of the time to go away for full weekends so what we've been trying to do is obviously if I'm working at a weekend I'll have a day off in the week so what we've been looking to try and do is to try and find sites that are within 10-15 minutes drive of my work so that once we've finished we could just drive there and get set up and because we haven't had the hab check we're literally just turning up at sites, parking up, um, sun canopy out now, um, and, and barbecue, still relatively light nights. We wanted to try and get a feel for what the sites were like nearby. The first thing from, I was once I downloaded the app, the first thing that amazed me was just how many campsites that there are. Uh, not necessarily just these ones from the Caravan and Motorhome Club, we've, got, uh, we've been using an app which has got sites for pub stopovers and all that sort of stuff. And there's literally, literally thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of pitches and tens of thousands of campsites I never even knew about. So that really is my first tip is if you are a member of the club, make sure you download the app because what you want to do is, is that that will tell you exactly where the sites are, what it's near to. You can use the maps and all that sort of stuff make sure you get in the app because you'll be amazed what's around the corner and especially with the price of diesel as it is now or unleaded you know there will be sites that will be no more than 10 15 20 minutes drive away from where you are so like i mentioned the couple of sites which we've used so far have been within a 15 minute drive of where i work from and these are sites which i would never ever ever have found before so one of them was um, in Stoke or just outside Stoke so I'll put a link for both of the sites nearby uh, so one of them was just near uh, Stoke so that's obviously where my family are from so the reason why we wanted to stay there was because what we wanted to do was we wanted to be somewhere near so that you know what it's like when you get a new camper van or a new caravan you want to show it off so on the day off the next day we wanted to show you my family if I remember correctly the campsite was called The Lodge um, and it's just opposite uh, down a little lane um, it's got a car lake on there, it's got a shower block, it's got a toilet block and having only ever been on big commercial sites before, what I found really, really, really nice and really pleasant was just how quiet these places are and just, you know, not having 30, 40, 50 people within a 10, 20 metre radius of you and just being on these small sites where it's so quiet, so calm. But well, the best thing about having these small, calm, quiet sites is, is that you get to know the people a lot more, the people that run the sites and work on the sites as well. So we've also stayed on another site um, about 20 minutes away from Sheffield, 
Once again, that had a fishing lake on it as well. That was absolutely amazing. It was really hot. There was lots of fruit trees, which normally would have been amazing, but there was wasps. And I absolutely hate, categorically dislike wasps more than anything else in the whole wide world. But if it hadn't been for the wasps, it would have been absolutely lovely. We stayed on another site as well. This was a little bit further away. So we went and stayed on a site near Morecambe. Uh, that was to watch my beloved Stoke uh, be crap as always and get knocked out of the Carabao Cup to Morecambe on penalties. Uh, apart from the football, uh, you know, that site, shop on site, was a big site, was really nice. But my absolute favourite site that we've stayed on so far is one that's about 10 minutes away uh, and it's called Down on the Farm Willow Tree. Um, so I'm, I'm going to try and tie as much as I can without dragging on too much. but. Um, it's a it's about 15 minute drive from Northwich so it's basically it's from an old working farm I mean the farm is still working so it's run by a couple called Chris and Pat so Chris is the farmer uh, and Pat isn't a farmer I'll explain what I mean by that in a second so when we got there we pulled up on site Chris came over introduced himself and said oh you know my partner will be around she sort of deals with the campsite side of things um, but it was dead pleasant, dead nice, dead friendly. Uh, and then we were graced by the presence of uh, Patricia a little bit after that. So she came and brought us a, um, like a, a pack, like a full pack, five or six pages of about the farm, about the site, things to see and do in the local area. Um, she also brought six eggs as well. So what I loved about that was, was that, it was, it was like, it was like home cooked food, you know. What I mean by that is, is that she, you could see the heart that went into it. You can see all that, and to go and do that for every single person that stays. But what's amazing about that situation is, is that not only do they work on the farm, but um, Pat also works in the co-op nearby as well, in the post office, and she runs a post office, so she works. 40 hours a week now a little bit before I said that she was the worst farmer in the world so I'm going to tell you why now so um, she ends up keeping the animals uh, so as part of the farm she's got rescue ducks rescue cows geese the biggest rabbit that I've ever seen before in my whole life it was absolutely it was I've seen smaller horses than how big the rabbit was um, and what started off as a little bit of a, a, you know, a bit of thing where she would perhaps look after an animal for someone. She's now probably got somewhere in the region of about 100 to 120 animals that she has taken in from rescue centres, from people that can no longer look after the pets, from the elderly. And every penny that comes in to that campsite goes towards feeding the animals. So, you know, being a farmer, Chris is there to, to rear the animals and stuff like that. And then... Pat ends up keeping them uh, and what I found amazing about the whole situation was was that that was something if it hadn't been for the Caravan and Motorhome Club and for the app it's a campsite that we would never ever ever have known about and that was one of the main drivers really behind wanting to do this video is that I wanted to be able to say to people that there are world-class campsites that are four five six seven miles away you don't need to be traveling hundreds and hundreds of miles to the you know the wild wests of the UK because there's stuff right on your doorstep um, I think as our pitch without electric was 13 pound for a night now historically I've stayed on campsites where it's sometimes over 50 pound a night and given the choice I would probably go back if it was me and Lisa I would, I would go back to down on the farm willow tree every time because it's a small it's a family and you know the people that run it, you know, and you know, and, to, and I'll tell you one more thing about I'm going to get sidetracked again. So she came to us on the on the sat when she came to us on the Saturday night. She says, "Oh, you know, it's still a working farm, and you know, we can show you around the farm if you want to the next day." So she came and knocked on for us, and I'll just put some pictures that we've got now that we took on the day whilst I'm talking. Um, and she did uh, for me and Lisa and two other adults did a full tour of the farm showed us the animals and the stories behind them and she was picking them up and showing them to us and all that sort of stuff and it's just not the experience that you would get on a large commercial site so if you get a chance 
please, please, please go and check out Willow Tree down on the farm, Willow Tree, because every penny that that campsite makes goes back into the farm and goes back into the animals. And I think they're looking to build a, a hut for the cows at the moment, so um, for the pigs at the moment. Um, so I'm sure they would appreciate that. So these are things which we wouldn't have seen before and we wouldn't have experienced before if it hadn't have been for the Caravan and Motorhome Club and the experience and how that site made us feel, you know, and I don't believe for one second that that is the only one of those sites, be it in Cheshire, the North West, England, Wales. So there are these campsites all over the country. The Caravan and Motorhome Club, it's got something like 30,000 pitches a night. I think that's 18 million a year, I think it says somewhere. So if you wanted my honest opinion as to whether the Caravan and Motorhome Club was worth joining, 100% yes. Make sure you do and make sure you use it. Make sure you visit these small certified locations because they've all got a story to tell. And I think if you were to do one thing, is you know for a weekend four five six weekends a year go and visit one of these smaller sites because they're absolutely amazing and we wouldn't have known about any of these sites if it hadn't have been for getting a camper van and if you want to know what our camper van looks like just follow this video here